this year, Chorus have sent the engineer. So I hope that means I can give you a practical, honest view of what we're doing in Chorus. Um, somebody mentioned earlier on about the suits from Auckland. Um, there's not many suits in Chorus. Chorus is full of lots of practical, down to earth people that do stuff and make things happen. So what I've got today is just a few pictures and just a few slides that hopefully will give you an illustration of what we're doing in Chorus to try and meet this goal. And you're probably looking behind me and saying, he's a little bit mad. He thinks we can take fiber to 98% of New Zealand. I think we can. And to clarify, I'm not talking fiber to the cell site, fiber to the node, I'm talking about fiber to the home. And I really do think it's possible. Um, the interesting thing about when you get fiber is the government doesn't need to set any more goals. You get whatever speed you want. If you want 50, if you want 100, if you want 200, if you want one gigabit per second or even 10 gigabits per second, you can get it. There are strands of fiber in New Zealand carrying eight or nine terabits per second right now. So once you have fiber to the home, goals become irrelevant. So let's go back to where we don't currently have fiber to the home. Question for rural. First one we've heard today several times is how long? Because there's a question of when we can do this. Um, the other question for me is what interim solutions must we employ along the way? It could be wireless, it could be fiber to the node, it could be some of the solutions we've talked about today. And the third one that's really, really important and comes out through this pack is how do we collaborate? And I mean we, it's big companies like Chorus and Vodafone, it's government, it's farmers, it's communities, it's health centers, it's universities. How do we collaborate to actually make this happen? So I like pictures. Not many words, and I hope this tells a story. This is a bit of a tour of rural New Zealand. I just realized earlier on that this is all North Island, completely accidental, so apologies from anyone who's from the mainland. We've done it before. We have built copper to almost every single home in New Zealand. So why can't we do it again for fiber? You know, as recently as 1987, we were rolling out bucket loads of copper. Feeder copper going to cabinets and exchanges, distribution copper going to your homes. We've done this before and we can do it again. The last 2%, those beyond the 98%, and this in fact is into the last half a percent, radio networks. Chorus is a wireless network. We have a radio network that helps connect the last few percent. And this is, as we'll come to this, this is where we have a few problems to try and get fiber to. New Zealand with the Chorus network overlaid. The blue lines are the fiber network, the big blue dots are cabinets, and the smaller, do smaller blue dots are you, the homes. The Chorus network, the Chorus fiber network especially, goes where people goes. The cabinets go where people goes. We do live remotely on farms and they're really hard sometimes when they're in the back country, but generally we live in small communities together. And there's normally a Chorus cabinet somewhere near small communities. If you look really closely, you'll notice that some of those cabinets don't have fiber connected to them. And we'll come to this story. If you haven't got fiber connected to your cabinet, you're not going to get really good broadband. So this is one of the first goals that we need to try and address. This is the Chorus network with our wireless network put over the top. So if you go back 20, 30 years, we provided the service of the time, voice, to almost all New Zealanders. And we had to employ two tactics. Tactic number one, copper to every home. Tactic number two, wireless to the remaining homes. And I contest that we're going to have to do this again. So, down to the pictures, the first example. Um, this isn't RBI, this isn't deep rural New Zealand, this is UFB. So this is the government's ultra-fast broadband to build to 75% of New Zealanders. This is just outside Waiuku, to the west of Auckland. My point here is that we do build UFB today to some quite rural locations, so we do know how to do it. and. It's not just big, large, multi-dwelling units and urban houses. Around every fringe of every town um, that we build UFB to, there are properties like these that do have cows in the front paddock. This is RBI. This is Maharangi, up near Snell's Beach, down on the peninsula. And this is a chorus RBI cabinet. What's happened here? We've built fiber down to an old existing cabinet and we've replaced it with a modern asset, a modern cabinet, a modern DSL um, node, and these people now, at the end of the peninsula, get really good broadband. I was looking on the databases last night to get an example, and I just pulled, pulled the camera, 
on Google Maps, just 250 meters down the road. This guy on the left gets 98 megabits per second. Sustained all the time, not shared on copper. So there's a bit of a myth that you cannot provide superb broadband on copper. You can. But I'd also say it's still an interim solution because we're not yet at fiber to the home, but we can provide 100 megabits per second almost if people are close enough to chorus cabinets. But there's another story behind this build. So what did we do? We built fiber down the peninsula. The cabinet is the blue dot on the bottom left. The problem is that the distribution network went down. So everybody south of that cabinet got 100, 90, 80, 50, 40, 30, depending on how far away you were, megabits per second. Everybody north of the cabinet got sub one megabit per second speeds. A digital divide in Maharangi East. So what did we do with the community? Somebody mentioned earlier on about breaking into the fiber en route. We're getting much smarter at how we can break into the fiber on the route. So we're now working with the community on a design to actually take fiber to the home to people on Ridge Road. So now the people at the bottom are complaining that the people at the top are going to get better broadband than they are. So what's the point? The point is that we can break into fiber if we plan it and we collaborate and we work with community. Doing fiber to the home in some quite remote locations is absolutely possible. This is just west of Silverdale, north of Auckland. Um, this is a cabinet we were not doing yet. We have a list of cabinets. Some are expensive, some are very expensive, some are really, really expensive. This one's really expensive. Why? Because we've got seven kilometers of difficult, windy fiber build down a rural road. And there's no school at the end, which is what drove RBI1. So what did we do with the community? The community recognized that in the yellow circle, a new subdivision was being built. So we're building fiber to the home. Now, wouldn't it be easy if we went across the farmland and the private land to connect the cabinet. So the community rallied, got consent from the landowner, and together, funding it together between the local community and chorus, we took fiber one kilometer from the new subdivision to the cabinet. These guys now get really good broadband close to the cabinet, and again, admittedly, it drops off as you go further away, but we're taking one further step to taking these guys to the goal of fiber to the home. Steve will recognize this one. I can't pronounce this, I'll try. This is the Kararanga Valley, just, um, just east of Thames. I mean, first of all, congratulations to Vodafone. It's an amazing feat to build a cell tower on top of a hill with no power and no fiber. You know, so Steve has given those guys good voice coverage and good broadband in the valley whilst we catch up. Um, the blue line is Chorus Backhaul. So Chorus has provided microwave wireless backhaul up to that site so anybody can access that site even perhaps some of the smaller guys as well um, the next thing we're doing you'll notice the blue dot on the right hand side and you'll notice the blue line so there's a school at the end of the blue line on the diagram so we're currently planning to take fiber up the valley to the cabinet again a cabinet that has copper rather than fiber another small step on the route to take in fiber to the home. So these people have gone from zero mobile coverage, pretty poor broadband coverage, and we admit that, that's pretty poor broadband coverage up there from Chorus, to having great mobile coverage and really good DSL broadband coverage. These guys near that cabinet will get 98, 90, 80, 75 megabits per second sustained all the time, all for themselves. This is just outside Kataya in Northland. And again, the green line is fiber built by the RBI project. Cell site built, cabinets upgraded, fiber laid. You'll notice the fiber runs past the cabinet. It runs to the school. So all along the way, we've upgraded the cabinets and provided good broadband to the community. Unfortunately, you'll notice there's another cabinet that's a little bit further down the road. Now, if you look at these cabinets, what, does, what is the chorus asset? What do we own? We own copper, we own fiber, but we own cabinets. The cabinets have power. The cabinets have copper connected to them. And they're all pretty much exactly the same. This one has got 90, 80, 70 megabits per second right next to it. This one hasn't. And it's just down the road. And it's all a question of how we work together to get fiber to this cabinet, just like we did for the one in Silverdale. This is probably the worst examples. This is maybe where the small guys 
can really help, maybe with some help from Chorus, maybe with some help from the government. Chorus has got a wireless radio network that runs all over New Zealand. This is a customer mobile access radio, CMI, drop site. This provides voice to about 100 people in this area. This is Purarere, on the, um, just south of Hawke's Bay, just south of, um, of Hastings. They're 25 kilometres from the nearest road, and they're 25 kilometres from the nearest fibre. One day, one day, these are probably last on the list, we'll build fibre and we'll drop along the way and we'll get these guys fibre. But it's going to be a long time before we get to these guys and there has to be an interim solution that includes microwave radio, probably includes some of the smaller companies in this room. But once they get there, there is copper going to every single house in the area. So, just to conclude, we need to get fibre closer. If we get fibre closer, we get new cell sites, we get new cabinets, and eventually we get fibre to the home. If we stop building fibre, none of those things will happen, and you will never get fibre to the home. There are opportunities en route, and we recognise that we've done well sometimes. Other times we've done not so well. And I think somebody said earlier on, I think it was Kyle, that you guys need to tell us, talk to us, provide us the information, tell us when you think there's an opportunity for us to provide fibre on the route, or there's a new subdivision being built, or you know of some private land that we can build across to get fibre connected. Chorus is a practical company. And finally, and I think most importantly, if we're going to do this, we need to collaborate with government, with Chorus, with big companies, with small companies. If we do collaborate, I do truly, honestly believe that we can build fibre to the home to 98% of New Zealand. Thank you. That's me.